Hello everyone. Uh, we're going to do a, a short instructional uh, video about how to create uh, weather uh, charts from weather data using uh, Microsoft Excel. Uh, I had a request from uh, one of my followers uh, to do the, this video and uh, I've been using Excel uh, quite a number of years. I've been using it in the last couple months to do various uh, graphs about El Nino. So I'm going to show you how to do uh, some basic things. I'm going to uh, assume that you have a basic knowledge of how to uh, use uh, Excel. So I'm not going to go into any depth of that, but uh, we'll, we'll show you how to do some charts. Okay, we're going to use two data sets in this demonstration. One is uh, a daily uh, number of sunspots uh, for the three-month period between uh, September through uh, November of this year. And we're also going to do uh, use a data set that is the temperature difference from average for Nino 1 plus 2 uh, for about three, the same three-month period. Okay, first of all, this is Microsoft Excel uh, 2010. Uh, you might have a newer version, but it should operate about the same. First thing we're going to do is open up the first data set, which in this case is going to be the Sunspot daily data. Uh, we go up to where to the file file tab, and I, I've already set this up a bit, so we're going to use recent. Uh, you see that uh, we have uh, daily sunspot text up here at the top. We're going to click on that, and we're going to get this uh, text import wizard screen that pops up. Now, uh, the uh, data you download from weather sites are is probably going to be either be a TXT file or it's going to be a CSV file, and um, uh, the this data the data usually is. Uh, uh, individual records uh, will be by day with a carriage return at the end. Uh, sometimes they are all strung together and that's more complicated to import. So we're talking basically about files we download that are, are more properly formatted. They have uh, a given uh, month or daily record will occupy a single line with a carriage return. And you sort of see that here. You see that we have uh, uh, the 15th of September, uh, one line, 16th of September, 17th of September. So it should be structured this way to make things work properly. Okay, you have two choices here, delimited or fixed width. Uh, usually wise is to select uh, del delimited because that allows, basically what you're saying is that the, each individual field is separated by some uh, uh, character, usually a character that's not occurring in the data itself. And uh, uh, that allows for the, a given field to be a variable width. Always safer to do it that way. Okay, once we select the delimited field, we'll do a next. And this brings in uh, a screen that allows us to specify what the uh, delimiter character is. It defaults to tab that's often used in CSV and, and TXT files, but this particular file uses spaces between the data. So what we need to do in order to get it to import properly is we need to tick off the uh, space um, uh, delimiter. And as you can see, when I did that, we get these black vertical lines that appear here. That just shows that the um, uh, the program now knows that it should break the data at, at spaces. And you can use this window to make sure that uh, it's being broken uh, at the proper point uh, so it'll be imported correctly. Okay, we'll do next. Okay, what next allows us to, uh, this is a, a screen that allows you to select the type of format you want for the data that's being imported. Uh, General is, is fine uh, for most data. Occasionally you may want to import a particular column as a text field rather than in the general uh, general format. Um, in this case, we're going to leave everything uh, general. But this last column is um, all, all asterisks and that just indicates that the data for that day was complete. We don't really need that column to be imported. So we're going to select that column by clicking, uh, doing a left mouse click on the, the title here. And then we're going to 
uh, choose do not import column. And we're all set, so we're going to hit finish. And this is what we get. We get uh, all of the data imported. It's now broken into individual cells for the, the types of data it is. Uh, each of the uh, daily sunspouts is in column E. Okay, that brings in the first data set, but we're going to need another data set. Uh, that's the uh, Nino 1 plus 2 temperatures. And um, so we're going to import that next. And the way we do it is a little different. Uh, we select uh, the, uh, the cell uh, somewhere, uh, usually I do it near the top, and try and align it to the, uh, the first line of the, uh, the first uh, data set. And then we go and select the tab data. Uh, from this tab, you will get an option that says from text. So we're going to click on that. And uh, it will uh, bring up a screen to allow us to select the next set of data that we want to import. In this case, we're going to import Nino 1 plus 2 Daily Mod Demo 2. This is a file I set up uh, just to make sure it's going to import properly. Basically, the, the raw Nino 1 plus 2 uh, uh, temperature is taken four times a day. And since we only have one, uh, one per day for sunspots, I needed to do a little formatting of the data, and I've done that behind the scenes. OK, uh, once we selected that file, we can do import. And we get, again, the import wizard. And we follow all, essentially the same steps that we just did. Uh, choose delimited, uh, since we know this is a delimited uh, data file. And you'll notice there's no spaces here. Uh, that's usually what you'll see if the, uh, the file is delimited by a non-printing character, usually a tab. And we'll do a next. And sure enough, it is a tab. Uh, since it defaulted to tab as the delimiter, the tab shows a black line here. It means that the program now knows exactly where to break the data. And we hit next. And this again brings up the uh, screen where we, we uh, uh, can uh, uh, select the type of format we want for the data we're importing. Uh, we want to import all the both columns, so we're not going to say do not import. So everything is fine right here, and we're going to do a finish. Now in this case, you're going to see a different box pop up, import data. And this allows you to choose uh, the cell where you want the data to s start importing, or you can choose new worksheet, and that will just create a new worksheet and import it into that sheet. In this case, we want to have everything on the same sheet, so we'll leave this the way it is. It already shows uh, the uh, the cell where we uh, selected, and uh, we do OK, and there we are. We have the Nino 1 plus 2 temperatures along with the corresponding dates. Okay, now we want to do our chart. And the way you do that is you go back up here to where it says Insert. When you click on that tab, it reveals uh, all sorts of different charts. You can choose column, line, pie, etc. Uh, in Whenever you have a time series, that means data with respect to a date, um, it's uh, best to use a line uh, chart. So we're going to choose, click on Line. That brings up a sub-menu. We're going to just do a basic 2D line chart. We'll select that. OK, this one, this actually uh, shows some of the data because we already selected some of the data. But we're not going to uh, use this at all. First thing we do is we do a right mouse click to bring up this submenu. And you see where it says Select Data. We're going to select data. In this case, we, we didn't want this to, uh, to happen. So I'm going to just go ahead and delete these series. So they're not there anymore. And we're going to add in the uh, uh, Nino 1 plus 2 by hitting Add. I'm going to type Nino 1 plus 2. And this uh, it always defaults to this. This is why we had that. Uh, it, this just says you take the, uh, the buffer of any cells you've uh, selected before doing the chart. We don't. I usually just delete that first because I like to select the uh, cells uh, myself. And um, 
What we do is we go to the top of the uh, El Nino um, temperature data column and we uh, select that and then hold down the left uh, mouse button and go all the way down to the end of the temperatures and then release. That automatically copies in all those addresses for those cells into, uh, into this series. So we can go ahead and do OK. And uh, we now need to uh, set what the horizontal axis will be. That's going to be the date. Uh, so we select Edit. And we scroll back up here to the date column, which it happens to be in K. We select the first. Uh, hold the uh, left mouse uh, button down and drag this to the bottom of the dates and release the left mouse button. Okay, so now we have the first in the series and if we just scroll up here you can sort of see that. Let me see if I can get up here. Let me just close this window out. I want to show you what it looks like. Okay, that's Nino uh, 1 plus 2 with its temperatures. And if you look at the uh, El Nino 1 plus 2 temperatures, you'll see it never goes uh, above 3. Uh, and uh, if we look, we want to graph the uh, sunspots on the same graph. So since the sunspots actually, some of these days are in the, like 169 sunspots on this one day. If we graph the raw number of sun, sunspots onto this graph, it's going to swamp uh, Nino 1 plus 2 temperatures to the point where you won't see it uh, because this will be rescale to uh, like 169 and since this is only up to 3 it's going to be way down here and you're not going to see it. So we need to normalize the sunspots. And the way we do that we'll select uh, the first uh, H1 column and I know if I divide these sunspot numbers by 60 it's going to normalize them to never exceed uh, the number 3. So we're going to use that as our normalization factor. Okay, we select that cell. We type equals. That specifies we're going to have a, a function. And then we're going to type the, the first cell address for the first sunspot number, which happens to be E1. Okay. And we're going to divide that divide sign by 60. Okay. And then to enter that uh, formula, we're going to hit the uh, uh, little checkbox. And this is the normalized value for that day of sunspots. Now we need to include that formula all the way down the list. So we're going to do a right mouse click. We're going to do a copy. And then we're going to select the next um, uh, cell. We're going to hold down the uh, left mouse button. Go all the way down to the bottom here where the data ends. Do a right mouse click and do paste. Okay, so now we have normalized values for each of the days of the, for the sunspots. And that's what we're going to be graphing. Okay, we go back to the, uh, the chart. We do a right mouse click to bring up again our, our little uh, 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 submenu and we select select data. Okay, this is a, a new series, so we're going to add an, another series to the chart. We're going to call this series sunspots. Oops, let's retype that. And again, we have this um, uh, in there. I'm going to just delete that and hand select the data. So we're going to go back up to H1 hold the left mouse button down and we're going to go all the way down to the bottom and release the left mouse button. Okay, again it copies the addresses for the sunspot data. We're going to hit OK. And now again if you notice uh, we don't have a, this as date so we're going to have to edit that as well. Hit edit. Go back to the top where we have the uh, dates for these uh, rows and we're going to hold down the left mouse button and go to the bottom and release the left mouse button. Click OK and now we have 
both series uh, on the, uh, the same chart. We'll close this out by saying OK. And then we can scroll up and this is what it looks like. Now I like to uh, move this to a um, uh, a sheet of its own uh, just because it's easier to work with you have a little more real estate you're not covering up data so we're going to create a blank sub, sub uh, uh, sheet uh, and that's the way you do that is you click on this little area down here that will create a new sh blank sheet in the uh, workbook we're going to go back we're going to go outside where the the chart is actually located a right mouse click and copy. We're going to collect, uh, select the um, blank sheet. I usually choose a cell a little offset from the edges like B2. Do a right mouse click and do this paste. Okay, now we've pasted a copy of that uh, chart on its own worksheet. And the nice thing about this, it's still linked to all the data on the, on the first sheet. So if you change the data on that sheet, it's going to change the chart on this this sheet as well. Oh yeah, I'm going to show you a little bit of formatting here. Um, uh, this is the legend for the uh, the two uh, data sets and if you want to make these a little easier to read you can click on them uh, with a left mouse click. Do a right mouse click. It brings up a menu like this. The simple formatting menu you can change the, the uh, text to bold and I usually like to bring it up to about 12 and then you can click anywhere outside of the margins and now you have uh, a bold and uh, and a little big bigger text. You can do the same thing for the X and Y axis. Uh, all you do is click on that, do a right mouse click to bring up the sub -menu, menu and then in this case you do format axis and uh, you can uh, adjust the uh, the size of the uh, the type. Let me go back. It's actually a little quicker way to do that. Uh, you see the you have the same sub menu, so we can do a bold, and we can uh, make it uh, a little bit bigger here, like 12. And you can do the same thing on the y-axis. Click on that until you see the the little box around the the y-axis legend. Right mouse click, you can do bold and do 12 there too. Okay, so now it's a little easier to read. You can also do all sorts of other formats here. You can actually uh, have every other uh, tick uh, labeled uh, to make so that all these uh, dates are not so close together. The other thing I want to show you before we go is you can do a legend. Uh, the if you only graphed one data set, the the uh, the title of the chart is going to default to the legend title. But in, when you do more than one, uh, it's not going to have any title. And you can manually add a title by choosing insert. You'll give a, be given a choice of text box. You can select that. And you can draw a text box for the title. Uh, you can, well, I'm, I usually do, I set it to bold and I get a little bigger, uh, maybe 24 and we can do uh, test chart okay we can also go back and we can select that uh, text and we can center it in the little box okay so uh, that gives you some idea about the how to, uh, to chart uh, weather data it's fairly easy um, you just need to play around a little bit uh, with it sometimes to get it to look exactly right. So I'm going to leave it there. If you have any questions, give, give me a tweet. Uh, my address is at Pat Penn, that's P-A-T-P-E-N-D, and I'll try and answer them. Thanks a lot.